the tool is to count the numbers of frames in your hive that are mostly covered in bees. It's a very simple concept. Now I run mediums and my brood nest is three medium um, hive bodies with nine frames each. So I've got 27 frames in my brood nest and I will count how many of those frames are mostly covered in bees and record that at each inspection. Excuse me. <sighs> do you mind? I didn't do anything to you. So if you track that number over time, it can give you clues as to things like um, comparing one queen to another. You know, if you have one hive that is building up much more quickly than another hive, uh, the slower hive, maybe that's the queen you want to replace. You know, even if her brood pattern looks pretty good, she's just not cranking out eggs at a rate that you might want her to be cranking out eggs. Um, it can enable you to learn things like if your bees have swarmed, um, particularly like when you have a hundred colonies and you go and you look and you say, gee whiz, you know, there, there's not all that many bees in this hive now. I thought there were more before, but you don't remember because you have a hundred hives and you can't remember that stuff anymore. So you go back and you look at your notes and you say, wow, you know, there used to be 27 frames of bees in here and now there's only 15. So, and the brood nest is plugged with nectar. So what happened? They swarmed. Um, and that's pretty much definitive answer there. Or for instance, they may have some kind of a disease. Uh, Nozema disease is one that you can often get clues about using this method of record keeping. So if you have a colony where the number of frames remains more or less the same from one inspection to the next, and yet everybody else is building up, and you look in the brood nest and it looks kind of normal. You know, there's no spotty brood pattern, there's no obvious disease, no European fowl brood, no American fowl brood, no sack brood, no chalk brood, no nothing but they're just not building up the way you think that they ought to be building up. Well, Nozema serrani, which is what we have mostly nowadays, has pretty much replaced Nozema apis, is a disease where the bees have basically a very bad case of indigestion and the adult bees are dying very young. So the queen is perhaps barely able to keep up with the loss of adult bees by producing new brood. So your main symptom is your colony just doesn't build up and they're not eating. You're trying to feed them and they're really not taking in food and they're not building up properly. So if you record the number of frames and see that it's remaining more or less constant, it's a clue that you might want to get a sample and have them tested for Nosema serrani so you can then take action and treat them. We are checking this colony to see if they're queen right because I gave them a new queen last week. Having not been crazy about the brood pattern in the old queen. So I got to take a look and make sure that they've accepted the new queen and that she's out and laying. And we're also going to evaluate them for stores and for strength because we're at what is it? It's September 16th. Um, so we're now looking to make sure that they can get into the winter and have enough food to eat and that they've got enough bees to keep each other warm. Um, this top box looks pretty much full of honey to me and I don't even really need to pull a frame here. Um, because I can just evaluate it by lifting it. <laughs> I can see capped honey right in here. And looking there, that's about, I'd call that eight frames of bees up top. This one's light. The rest of these are pretty much full of bees. This one on this side is a little lighter. So I take the bees that I see over here and put them over there and that's about eight frames of bees. Now, tell me why you run nine frames in a ten frame box? Oh, it's just much easier to take these Restate frames the out. Yeah, so, so why do I run nine frames as opposed to ten? 
it's because it's so much easier to take them out of here. And I, you know, I have not um, disrupted the bees. I haven't rolled the bees. I haven't struggled for two minutes to try and get this frame out of here. You know, they just come right out. So you can't do that when it's foundation. You've got to have 10 frames of foundation. Otherwise, you have a, a bee space violation, and the bee space police will come and, and grab you and take you away <laughs> and lock you up, and you'll have a horrible mess. Um, so you've got to wait until your foundation is drawn, and then you can take out a frame and re-space them so they're about evenly spaced. Um, and run nine frames instead. And you, you still have plenty of bees, and it's much easier in honey supers, of course, because the um, cappings stick out beyond the frame. So kind of no matter what you're using to uncap that honey, oh, this is 40 pounds of honey. So, so that's good. No matter what you're using to uncap the honey, um, it's easier to uncap and you'll get better results. So I said I requeen this and I think that the cage is probably over here. So in this case, I am going to take out one of these frames over here so that I don't roll everybody when I take that cage out. And look at that. That's a beautiful frame with cap brood and open brood and I see very young open brood so I know my queen is in there the queen that I gave them a week ago has been released and she's on the job and it looks like she's doing a pretty good job and now I just have to take that queen cage out of there this is nine frames of bees here and there's the cage Everybody's crawling around. This is a California mini cage. These gals are good. They look pretty good to me. I'll just straighten this out a little bit. Excuse me. Sorry about that. And uh, That's all I need to look at. That top box was full of honey. I'm just going to take a peek here and see, do I have honey on some of these outer frames? Yeah, lots of honey here. It's not all capped, but there's honey. And I can see honey here. So I'm judging that these bees probably have at least 50 pounds of honey. They might need a little bit more to get through the winter, but they're, uh, they're pretty good. They're looking pretty good. Now, I like to count frames of bees because it gives me something to track that's objective that I can write down and I can look at over time to evaluate the colony's strengths. Um, if I write down today that there are 26 frames of bees, in this hive and I come back in a week and there are only 21 frames of bees or even worse there are 15 frames of bees you know then I'm gonna ask myself what happened and probably what happened is that the bees may have swarmed and I have known them to swarm as late as October so um, now I looked here and you want to count really before you smoke them down because it's just easier to do. And I said, okay, I think there's about eight there. There's nine here. I see bees on every frame. Looking between the frames, they're virtually full of bees. Enough, I can call it nine. Now I want to find out how many are down in this bottom box. And I can do it very easily without actually taking off the middle box. So I'm just going to crack the bottom box and take a peek. And I would say that that is about another eight frames of bees. It's not loaded, low, and maybe even seven. Can you see that there? 
This one here is not really loaded with bees, nor is this. Here, let's take them off so we can look. This one's kind of empty. This one's not all that great, but there's bees on this side of it. I'd call this eight frames of bees. So I've got eight plus eight plus nine. That gives me 25 frames of bees in this hive. Trying to take, see if I noted, the last time I noted the number of frames in there was a while back. So on 5-2, I said they had 19 frames of bees. So I don't know what the strength is, but judging from the action in the front of this colony, they don't look very strong. You can see there's way fewer bees on top of the inner cover. They didn't clean out that leaf. Either that or I just put it in there, which is possible. That's maybe two frames of bees. If I were feeling generous, I might say three, but it's not a lot of bees there. There's quite a bit of honey here. And there's a good many bees there. So maybe this isn't as hopeless as we had feared. Um, that's like eight and a half frames. So maybe I'll call that three and this eight and call it 11 frames so far. And they seem pretty calm. So maybe they made themselves a queen. Let's see if we have any open brood in here. Excuse me. Now notice I don't go at the end. I go right for the middle. Um, it's because I don't want to take the time. Not seeing eggs on this frame. Nope, not a good sign. The question is, where is the frame of capped brood and the frame of open brood that I gave them before? Maybe I put them in the bottom box? These bees are talking to us and they're saying they're not happy bees. That's the, that's the queenless roar. And I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope I find some eggs somewhere. But right now, I'm not seeing any evidence of a queen here. There's nectar in the brood nest here. Um, and, oh, shoot. And I'm starting to get stung, so I'm going to put my veil on. And that's also not unusual with a colony that is queenless. I don't see any brood here at all, I, and uh, there's nothing here. Pollen. All right, these gals need a queen, and I'm not gonna distress them any more than they're already distressed. If I judge they're not strong enough to get through the winter in another three weeks, I will break the bees down for nukes. I'll keep enough in, you know, with the new queen. I mean, they'll release the queen and accept her as long as I give them a frame of, or two of brood to go along with the queen. Um, 
but they, and they've got honey here. This hive will make three nukes. You know, there's the resources there of, of bees and, and food to make three nukes. So I, you know, this will take care of not just one queen, but three queens. Now come back and we'll do that. That they're building up. And yep, that's, all right, so maybe this frame isn't totally full, although actually I see a lot of bees in the, in the, uh, down there. So, at worst, I'd call that eight frames, and two are missing on top, so that's a total of three, so 24 frames. So they've gone up a couple of frames in a pretty short time. I think that last inspection was eight days ago. No, earlier than that. But still, they're good. 9, 16, 24 frames, bees and brood. I'll call that about 35 to 40 pounds of honey. Um, that's a really excellent brood pattern. All right, let's see what this one says. Nine, five, 65 pounds of honey and 25 frames bees and brood. Excellent brood pattern. Removed apivar and took one frame cat brood for OB3, which didn't do them any good, but that's not the fault of these gals. So really the question here is, are they strong enough to put a honey super on for this very, very late flow? Um, seems like almost everybody has enough honey here. They've got lots of honey, and that's from the barrel feeding. We'll go and take a look at the barrel feeding site when we get done here. You girls going to be nice? Make nice and not sting mama in the nose again? You girls are fine. Okay. Given that, I'm going to get out of this veil. That's full of bees. Look at the color of this wax here. You know, they've got, I think, some pollen mixed in with this wax, or it's possible that could be from eating goldenrod honey. That's really darker wax. This, this wax here looks to me like sugar syrup wax, which has a distinctive kind of a tan color because it's the, it's the nectar that they've been eating that determines the color of the beeswax. Mm -hmm. um, the linden and the black locust honey that we get early in spring makes this perfect, like show quality yellow wax. Gorgeous, lemon yellow wax. That's really heavy. I got no problem with these gals. And I'm going to give them a honey super. Because all of these frames over here were full of honey. They've got everything they need, so that means it's my turn. We have a deal. I keep them alive. They give me the extra honey they don't need. <laughs> Works out well for both of us. So that's OB5 and 916. I'm just going to put excellent colony supered.
I think it's an excellent tool for new beekeepers because it enables you to track the status of your bees and, and it gives you clues about your bees that you wouldn't otherwise have.